Now let's practice balancing a redox reaction in basic solution, keeping in mind that our process here involves thinking about the situation as if we were in acidic solution until we're all balanced up as if the reaction was occurring in acidic solution, and then we add hydroxides to neutralize any of the H pluses, leaving us with waters and excess hydroxide on the other side of the equation. So this is gonna draw on our acidic process with the added step of adding hydroxides and dropping out any redundant waters. In this particular example, on the reactant side, we have aqueous permanganate, that's MnO4 minus, reacting with chromium three hydroxide, CrOH3, and the products are MnO2, that's manganese four oxide, and aqueous chromate ion, CrO4 two minus. So let's start by establishing our half reactions by grouping up those species that involve manganese into one half reaction and those that involve chromium into the second half reaction. So here we go. And at this point, we wanna make sure that we're balanced on all atoms that are not hydrogen or oxygen. And in here, in fact, we are. We have one manganese, one manganese, good to go there, and one chromium and one chromium. So we're all balanced up on atoms that are not hydrogen or oxygen. To balance on oxygen in the next step, we're going to add waters to either side as needed. So for example, in the manganese half reaction, we've got four oxygens on the left-hand side and two oxygens on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna to need to add two waters to the right-hand side of this half reaction to ensure that we're balanced on oxygen. Likewise, in the chromium case, I've got three oxygens on the left-hand side in the chromium hydroxide, and I've got four oxygens on the right-hand side in the chromate anion. So I'm gonna to need to add waters to the left-hand side here, specifically a water molecule H2O liquid to ensure that I'm all balanced up on water on that half reaction. All right, that's looking good. But what that's done has, uh, it has disrupted the hydrogen balance, right? Since we've added hydrogens that need to be taken into account as well. For example, in the manganese half reaction, well, I've got four waters on, uh, four hydrogens on the right-hand side, right? I've got these two water molecules which have two hydrogens each. So to balance on hydrogen, I'm gonna need four H pluses on the reactant side here, four aqueous H pluses there. And in the bottom case, I have two hydrogens on the left-hand side in the H2O here. I'm gonna need two H pluses on the right-hand side in order to balance those out. But wait, I've also got three H's in the chromium hydroxide that I need to watch out for. So in fact, I have a total of five hydrogens on the left-hand side. So five H pluses need to appear on the left-hand side here. And now we're all balanced up on hydrogen. And indeed, if you take a close look at these half reactions, you'll notice that we are all balanced up on all atoms. And I encourage you to pause the video and verify this before moving forward. All right, there is still a problem here, which is that charge is not balanced. For example, in the top case, we've got a net charge of plus three on the left-hand side, but a neutral charge on the right-hand side. And remember, we balance charge by adding electrons either to the reactant or the product side. So in the case of the manganese half reaction, we're gonna to need to add three negatively charged electrons to that half reaction to ensure that both sides have a net charge of zero. And in the case of the bottom half reaction, I'm going to need to add three electrons to the product side. Notice that the net charge is plus three, five H pluses and a two minus from the chromate anion. So the three electrons ensure that that side of that half reaction is neutral and the left hand side is neutral involving only water and chromium three hydroxide. So we're all balanced up on charge now. The next step here is to ensure that the numbers of electrons transferred are the same in both half reactions, scaling as necessary. And one of the beautiful things about this case is we've got three electrons gained in the first case. Notice this is a reduction process with electrons on the reactant side. And we've got three electrons lost 
in the second case, making this the oxidation half reaction. And so the beautiful thing about this is we don't need to scale at all, right? We can simply add everything up to produce the net reaction. And when we do that, we end up with, you know what? Let's take advantage of copy and paste for this because we can, right? We can simply copy down these guys. And below those guys, we can add the permanganate reactants here. So here's our full set of reactants. Draw an arrow. And on the right-hand side, we're going to add the products copy and paste and we're going to add the products of the chromium half reaction and notice I've left out the electrons since I know these will subtract out ultimately they're they're already balanced we had to make sure they were balanced in a previous step on both the reactant and product sides so I'm not even going to copy them down all right now let's drop out any species that appear on both sides of the equation. I notice, for example, that there's a water on the left-hand side of the equation right here, and there are two waters on the right-hand side. So one of those water molecules is just a spectator, and I can actually remove it entirely from the left-hand side of the equation and drop this coefficient of two down to a one. That's gonna make things simpler. All right, the other thing I can notice is that I've got four H pluses on the left, and five H pluses on the right. So I can drop out these four H pluses from both sides and drop this five down to a one, coefficient of one, and now I've simplified the equation even further. And I believe this is pretty much the simplest we can get it with chromium three hydroxide and permanganate reacting on the reactant side to produce an H2O, an H plus, an MnO2, and a CrO4 2 minus. So things ended up pretty simple at the end of the day in this, uh, in this redox reaction. Now, we're not done. Let's remind ourselves what we're trying to do here. We're trying to balance this reaction in basic solution, which is gonna have very, very, very little aqueous H plus in it, right? So what we do now, the key thing to do now is add hydroxide to eliminate H plus. From this reaction and we add as many hydroxides as we need to neutralize all of the H pluses. In this case we just need to add one hydroxide to the product side to balance out that one H plus and to ensure that things stay balanced overall we need to also add that hydroxide to the left hand side. Now what I'm going to do is think about what this does with the H plus. This is going to turn that H plus into an H2O. H plus plus OH minus gives H2O, right? So I'm going to erase this. And just briefly, I'm going to write this as H2O to show that these have combined with each other. Now, I've got a plus H2O and a plus H2O on the right-hand side of the equation, here and here. And so I can actually combine these, right, into not two plus H2Os, but just plus two H2O, throw a coefficient of two, out front of this H2O, and I'm good to go. And on the left-hand side, well, that plus OH minus is pretty much going to stay exactly the same. It doesn't react with anything else on that side, so let's just write it as plus OH minus aqueous. And now, here again, it's worthwhile to take a look, make sure that this reaction is balanced on atoms and charge. In the interest of time, I'm not going to do that but I encourage you to pause the video and verify that all of the atoms are balanced and both sides of the equation have the same net charge. That's an important sanity check when you're balancing redox reactions like this.